Practice exam. You will hear a number of different recordings and will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the questions and instructions and you will have a chance to check your answers. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four sections. At the end of the test, you will be given ten minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. Now turn to section one. Section one. You will hear a customer asking for help in a shop. First, you will have some time to look at questions one to seven. You will see that there is an example which has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation related to this will be played first. Excuse me, where are the dresses? They're at the end of this aisle, on the left. Can I help you with anything? The assistant says the dresses are on the left, so left is written as the answer. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to seven. Excuse me, where are the dresses? They're at the end of this aisle, on the left. Can I help you with anything? Yes, maybe. I'm not from around here, so I don't know this store. Well, I can help you with anything you need. Fantastic. I'm actually down here for my brother's wedding, and I need something to wear. I've just started a new job, and I haven't had time to get anything yet. I'm looking for something smart. Maybe a new dress. Well, what about this one? I think it's too hot for long sleeves. Yes. Well, uh, this one has shorter sleeves, and it still has the bow, which I think is a nice detail. Uh, or there's this patterned one. I'm not keen on a pattern. I think I'll go for the one with the bow. Do you have it in a size 10? Let me have a look. Uh, yes, here. Great. I need a hat, and then I can try them on together. What kind of hat are you looking for? What about this one with the flower? Yes, but if I may suggest, a taller hat would add to your height. Really? Yes. Try this one. Oh, I see what you mean. We have this style with the single flower or with a small bunch, and it comes with a, a wide or narrow brim. I like the narrow brim and just the one flower. Hmm. Can I have a blue flower? I'm afraid it just comes in cream. Well... It goes with the dress anyway. Great. I'll place an order and have the hat sent to you. It'll take about two days to be delivered. Is that okay? Yes, that's fine. I need to take down a few details for delivery. Can I take your name? Ellen Barker. And the delivery address? It'll be my brother's address. It's 15... No, 14 Brightwell Avenue. 14... Uh, can you spell that, please? Yes, B-R-I-G-H-T-W-E-L-L -L Avenue, Staybridge, Kent, D-A-4-7-D-F. And can I take a contact number? Yes, my mobile is 03 no, it's a four at the end. Oh, sorry. I've got it now. We can deliver on May the 12th. We can't specify an exact time, just morning or afternoon. Any time in the early morning is fine. And how would you like to pay? Visa. Great. That comes to £32.25. OK, thanks. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 8 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 8 to 10. I'm just going to try this dress on and then look for shoes. Where are the changing rooms? They're to the left of the store, right next to customer services. And I want some shoes and accessories too. Where can I find them? The accessories are in the women's wear department. The shoe department is right at the front of the store, between men's wear and home furnishings. Oh, no, sorry, <laughs> we've just moved the shoe department for the summer season. It's now very near the changing rooms, actually, straight in front of them. 
Thanks so much for your help. And where can I pay for the other things? The cash desk is at the front of the store, by the menswear. Thanks. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Section 2. In this section, you'll hear a monologue about a guided tour to London. First, you have some time to read questions 11 to 21. Now listen to the monologue and answer questions 11 to 21. Hello. Can I just have your attention for a minute? Thank you. My name is Mary Golding. Some of you may recognise me. I used to be a lecturer here at the college, but I changed jobs last year and now I work as the student officer. OK, well, I'm in today to tell you about a guided tour that we've got going to um, London. Well. This will be a good chance for those of you who haven't been to London before to have a look at this beautiful city. I think those of you who come will thoroughly enjoy it. The trip is going to be for five days, from the 31st of March, which is a Saturday, to the 4th of April, the following Wednesday. We'll be taking a medium-sized coach, so there'll be 45 places on that. Last time it was a minibus with only 16 places, which proved insufficient for students' needs. According to the London Development Agency, London has over 200 museums, 500 cinema screens, 108 music halls, and five symphony orchestras. Needless to say, we can't see it all in one day. Here are some major sites we are going to tackle on the first visit to London. On the first day we're in London, we'll be going on a boat trip up the River Thames and up the London Eye. The Eye is a giant modern ferris wheel which stands on the south of the river across from the Houses of Parliament. The boat cruise is included in the cost of the trip, so you won't need to worry about spending extra money. But you have to pay to ride the Eye to gaze out over the vast city. After that, we'll visit the Houses of Parliament. The Houses of Parliament, also known as Westminster Palace, was designed in the Gothic style. One of London's famous landmarks, Big Ben, the clock tower named for its 13-ton bell, is also found here. You can have a free visit up there. I think you all know Westminster Abbey, one of the most visited Christian churches in the world. There is no admission charge for this, but there are lots of souvenir shops around, so you might need some money for those. On the second day, we'll be going to the British Museum. The oldest museum in the world is also the most visited site in London. You have to pay to get in there, but it's not expensive. The museum's newly constructed £100 million Great Court, a two-acre square enclosed by a glass roof, is the largest covered public square in Europe. It is called the Great Court. On the third day, you'll be free to do whatever you like. Personally, I recommend the Natural History Museum. It has over 68 million specimens. Fun exhibits include the Blue Whale exhibit, Rainforest Gallery, Earthquake Experience, and Dinosaur Displays. The Globe Theatre is a place worthy of visiting. The original Globe Theatre, where actors performed William Shakespeare's plays, burned down in 1613. The newly reconstructed Globe, however, copies original drawings of the 16th century's building's details and uses many of the same techniques and materials. Theatre-goers can see performances of Shakespeare's plays, such as Romeo and Juliet and Much Ado About Nothing. If you'd like, can you sign up on this form on the student notice board by Friday? It'll be first come, first served. 
That is the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section three. Listening, section three. You will hear two students discussing the subject of rock art. First, you have some time to look at questions twenty-one to twenty-seven. Now listen carefully and answer questions twenty-one to twenty-seven. Hello, David. Oh, hi, Mia. Sorry, I'm a bit late. Oh, no problem. Thanks for agreeing to help me with my assignment today. I really needed to go over it with someone. Sure. You were going to talk about European rock art, weren't you? Yes, the rock drawings in the caves of Lascaux in Western France. Oh, fantastic! Over thirteen thousand years old, I believe. What sort of drawings are they? They're drawings of animals, on the whole, but you can also find some human representations as well as some signs. There are roughly six hundred drawings at Lascaux. Really? Were they mostly pictures of bulls? Well, no, actually. The animal most depicted was the horse.、Hmm. Have a look at this graph.、Hmm. It shows the distribution of the different animals. You see, first the horse, and then after that a sort of prehistoric bull. Oh, okay. That's interesting, isn't it? And the third most commonly drawn creature was the stag. There were some other animals, but these are the main ones. What are the drawings like? I mean, what sort of style? Well, the bulls are depicted very figuratively. They're not very realistic. They're very big by comparison to the other drawings of people and signs. They appear to be almost three-dimensional in some cases, following the contours of the cave walls, but. Of course, they're not. Amazing. Perhaps they felt these animals were the most impressive and needed to be represented like that. Yeah, maybe. The drawings of humans, by contrast, consist of just simple lines, like the stick figures my little sister draws. Perhaps humans were seen as less important. Hmm. Perhaps. What about the signs? How did they draw them? There doesn't appear to be much evidence of signs, and those that have been found are usually made up of little points, rather like Aboriginal art from Australia. Yes, something like that, but not as complex, of course. So, apart from the bulls and horses and stags, were there any other creatures depicted? In one or two chambers, you do find pictures of fish,、oh. but they're quite rare. What sort of size is the cave? It must be quite large to have that many pictures. Well, it's actually a number of interlinking chambers, really. Here's a map showing where the different drawings can be found. Oh, good. Let's have a look at that. The first twenty meters inside the cave slope down very steeply to the first hall in the network. That's called the Great Hall of the Bulls. Here. Okay. Then, off to the left, we have the painted gallery, which is about thirty meters long and is basically a continuation of this first hall, but further into the cave. Exactly.、Oh. Then we find a second lower gallery called the lateral passage. This opens off the aisle to the right of the great hall of the bulls. It connects the next chamber with an area known as the main gallery. At the end of the main gallery is the chamber of felines. There are one or two other connecting chambers, but there's no evidence of man having been in these rooms. Before you hear the rest of the discussion, you have some time to look at questions twenty-eight to thirty. Now listen and answer questions twenty-eight to thirty. Is the cave open to the public today? Well, no, because after the initial discovery in 1940, it was opened, and literally millions of people came through to see the drawings.、Uh. 
Then, in the fifties, the experts started to worry about the damage being done to the drawings, and the government finally closed the Lascaux cave in 1963. Is that so? It wasn't really the tourists that were doing the harm, but the fact that after thousands of years, the cave was suddenly open to the atmosphere, and so bacteria and fungi started to destroy the pictures. You need a special permit to enter the cave now, and very few people can get that, unless they're scientists or have some official status. It's a shame, but I can see that they had to do something to protect the cave. So that means you can no longer see this rock art. Well, not exactly. What they've done is recreate the drawings in a man-made cave, which you can visit. Oh, brilliant! Yeah, the authorities decided to reproduce the two best sections of the site, so they've created a life-size copy of the Hall of the Bulls and of the painted gallery. It's just a cement shell, which corresponds in shape to the interior of the original. So now you can visit the caves without actually harming any of the fifteen thousand year old paintings.、Mm -hmm. That is the end of section three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section four. Section four. You are going to listen to a lecture about animals. Look at questions thirty-one to forty-two. Now listen to the lecture and answer questions thirty-one to forty-two. In our world of living things, we have plants, animals, and people. Plants belong to a group called the plant kingdom, while animals and people belong to the animal kingdom. Look around you, and you will see many different types of animals. Some animals are tiny, while others are very large. Some animals are soft and long, while others are hard and rounded. Different types of animals, which are alike in certain ways, are put into groups. Let us find out how animals are put into groups. We can put animals into groups by studying their behaviour. We want to know how their bodies work, how they live, how they produce their young, how they find their food, what they eat, how long they live, and so on. We also have to examine the different parts of their bodies. When we examine them, here are a few questions we must ask ourselves: Do they have scales, feathers, or fur on their bodies? How many legs do they have? How many wings are there? Are there fins? But the first and most important question is: Do the animals have backbones or not? All animals with backbones are put into one big group called vertebrates. All animals without backbones go into another group called invertebrates. Invertebrates are animals which do not have backbones or other bones inside their bodies. Some have soft bodies and some have hard coverings which protect their bodies. Vertebrates are animals with backbones and bones inside their bodies. The bones help to support their bodies. There are five main groups of vertebrates. The fish, the amphibians, the reptiles, the birds, and the mammals. Fish, amphibians, and reptiles are known as cold-blooded vertebrates. The blood of a warm-blooded vertebrate remains around the same temperature both on warm and cold days. Fish live in water and have fins which help them to swim. The body of a fish is made up of the head, the trunk, and the tail. The tail ends in a tail fin. There are many different kinds of fish, and they are of many different shapes and colours. Some fish are long and thin, while others are flat and rounded. 
Most fish have bodies which are broad at the trunk region and narrow towards the head and tail. Frogs, toads, newts, and salamanders are amphibians. All amphibians have thin skins which are usually wet and slimy. They have two pairs of legs. The toes of most amphibians have webs of skin between them. This allows them to swim well in water. The body of a frog or a toad is made up of two parts: head and the trunk. There is no neck or tail. Adult newts and salamanders have tails. Frogs and toads are important to human beings as they feed on insects. Some of these insects may be harmful to us. Toads produce poison from the skin for protection. Wash your hands after touching a toad. Reptiles live mainly on land, but some live in water. They breathe through lungs and have dry, scaly skins. Reptiles which live in water come to the water surface to breathe. Reptiles lay eggs with hard shells. Lizards, snakes, and tortoises are reptiles which live mainly on land, while crocodiles, alligators, and turtles live in water. The body of a reptile, such as the crocodile and lizard, is made up of the head, the trunk, and the tail. Most reptiles do not have necks. Many reptiles have four legs with toes. Turtles and tortoises have hard shells which protect their bodies. Snakes are different from the other reptiles because their bodies are very long and they have no legs. They move by gliding along the ground. Some snakes can also swim. Birds are animals with feathers on their bodies. They have many different types of feathers. Some are small and fluffy, and others are long and flat. Feathers come in many different colors. Birds have no front legs, but instead they have a pair of wings. They use their wings to fly, but some birds have wings, such as penguins and emus, as small and stubby. These birds cannot fly. The body of a bird is made up of a head, a neck, a trunk, and a tail. The mouth of a bird is in the form of a hard bill or beak. The shape of the bill depends on the type of food the bird eats. Some birds, such as ducks, have flat bills for sieving small bits of food from the mud. Other birds, such as eagles, have sharp, pointed bills for catching small animals and tearing fish. Birds which search for frogs and worms in the mud, such as storks and flamingos, have long, pointed bills. Most mammals live on land, but some, such as whales and dolphins, live in water. Some mammals, such as bats, have wings and can fly. Other mammals, such as moles and rabbits, burrow into the ground and live there. Mammals have hair on their bodies. Bears and dogs have very thick hair, which is called fur. Human beings have little hair on most parts of their bodies, but a lot on their heads. All mammals breathe through lungs. Even those which live in water have to come to the surface of the water to breathe. The young mammals grow in the bodies of their mothers. When they are old enough, they come out of their mothers' bodies. When they come out, they are said to be born. The mother takes care of her newborn baby and feeds it with milk, which is formed in her body. When the baby is older, he takes care of himself. That's the end of section four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.